Not you, Mary, John, and Bob. These are kids from other schools. Uh, did you know in some states it used to be against the law to teach blacks to read or write? Nowadays, we're getting these integrated school rooms, and most people think that if we get enough teaching and enough jobs, everything is going to take care of itself. But there is a scar of history running right through kids as young as these. It tears you up if you know how to look at drawings kids make, because kids shouldn't know much about history and anything about discrimination. I mean, nobody hates little black kids, but why do some of them cause so much trouble? And if you ask black and white children to draw themselves, or trees, or houses, some strange things happen. We ask some ordinary white kids from ordinary families to make some drawings for us. Like, well, let's call him John. John's white, and we asked him to draw himself. This is John. This is his house, and this is his tree. Then we asked a black kid, let's call him Ralph, to do the same thing. This is Ralph's drawing of himself. This is his tree. Now, why should two kids of the same age draw so differently? Enter the expert. This is Dr. Emanuel Hammer, psychiatrist specializing in children's therapy. Well, let me illustrate it for you. Let's take these drawings. No matter what a child draws, he's really picturing himself. Ask a secure child to draw a tree, and he's likely to draw a bountiful spreading tree. A black child drew this tree, cut off in its growth, stark, bare, ungratified. It works the same way with drawings of people, normal children, average drawings. The mood is happy, the child feels capable, the drawings are complete, and the arms are developed to emphasize strength. These children were old enough to draw complete figures. The significant fact is what they left out, arms, hands. A child may sense that a situation in life is so powerless that he himself is equivalent to an armless man. My own study reveals that armless people appear three times more frequently in the drawings by black children than those by white. The faceless beings suggest that these youngsters not only feel themselves to be less than they might be, they don't even feel themselves to be. The black child who is forced to live in a hostile world may disappear in self-defense. He drifts through life feeling like a shadow. He stops caring and he stops trying. A child who has this on his mind cannot be a child. A child who has this on his mind could want to burn down cities when he gets older. The whole confusion was summed up by a black nine-year-old in these two paintings. This is a nine-year-old boy draws a white man, Robin Hood maybe. And this is how the same boy draws himself. And this is the consequence of deformed history. Linda, close the curtains. Brian, lower the screen. Bonnie, lights, please. In the past 50 years, 33,000 feature films have been made in the United States, and about 6,000 of them have had parts for black actors. For the most part, the black portraits have been drawn by white writers, white producers, and white directors for a white audience. Most black parts were the way white Americans wanted them to be. The black male was consistently shown as nobody, nothing. He had no qualities that could be admired by any man, or more particularly, any woman. When the sun goes down, the tide goes down, the dark gets around and they all begin to shout. Hey, hey, Uncle Doug is speaking. White people didn't like to think much about them. Sort of like a relative, uh, you got in a rest home. I mean, happy darkies, dancing and singing was all they wanted to hear about. Being good Christians, the whites out front like to think the blacks out back were kind of happy. Uncle Tom's Cabin was one of the first movies made that tried to say anything about black people. Uncle Tom was changed a little each time it was put on the stage and all the parts were played by white actors. And by the time they made a movie of it in 1903, Uncle Tom was just the white man's idea of a good nigga. You might say he was what H. Rat Brown ate. They made this picture five times. By the time they finished with it, Mickey Rooney could have played Uncle Tom.
minstrel shows started as a black man's entertainment for himself and the plantation owners. When they were filmed, though, they were done by a white cast. You figure that out. They were done as sort of a joke, and the black entertainer couldn't even get a job making fun of himself. The first really vicious anti-Negro film was called The Birth of a Nation, and it was a honey. And the second worst thing about it was that technically, in 1918, it was the best movie that had ever been made. A cat named D.W. Griffith produced it, and he knew how. See? Birth of a Nation pretended to tell the story of the Civil War and what happened afterwards when the slaves were freed. White woman couldn't walk on her own sidewalk if you believed the picture. In the South, Negroes got the right to vote, and the movie showed black vote collectors refusing to accept white votes and black people sneaking in extra votes. And if these black bad guys don't look very bad to you, it's probably because they were white actors wearing burnt cork. Negro legislators took over in the South, and in the film they were made to look like apes. And this was the movie version of how it looked in the Southern State Legislature. They drank whiskey. They ate chicken with their hands in the state house, And they put their feet up on the table with the shoes off. And of course, they passed all sorts of crazy laws, according to the film like anybody could marry anybody they wanted to. It was obvious to anyone who saw this picture that Negroes weren't fit to govern themselves or anyone else because they really weren't people. This film is 50 years old and it may look silly and out of date now, but it didn't look silly when it was made seen. Several million Americans who saw it were propagandized to believe that this is the way things would be if they weren't careful. So they've been pretty careful. Colonel Cameron, a former officer in the Confederate Army, is all upset over the way Northerners and the freed slaves are changing his South, taking a mint julep right out of his mouth. So he takes a walk one day while he's worrying about it, and he sees two white kids playing, and then four black kids come along. Being hardly human and naturally afraid of ghosts, the black kids run. Colonel Cameron sees the whole scene, gets his great idea. And with this, that great white all-American organization, the KKK, was born. The cavalry and the bedsheet has come to the rescue. The South is saved. In this picture, the Ku Klux Klan was the good boy who saved the South. Most Hollywood films, though, even the early ones, weren't really nasty. Nobody was sitting around saying, hey, let's take care of the niggas. What producers were doing was making money. And to make money, they made pictures that white ticket buyers would enjoy. They showed Negroes the way most Americans like to think of them. To blame Hollywood is like throwing a rock at the mirror because you don't like what you see in it. Burt Williams was one of the great vaudeville performers. He couldn't get parts in white pictures, so he made a lot of short comedies. He played the part most Americans consider typical Negro. It wasn't bad, really, just lazy, stupid, and happy the way he was. And his feet hurt. He was afraid of most everything. And when he was scared, he shook, and his teeth chattered. Unlike a scared white man, the black man's eyes could pop out of his head. And when he was scared, he was so scared he couldn't talk. And he was also so scared he couldn't run. Black women, on the other hand, were steady and imperturbable. They stood like a rock on the face of things that scared black men. Another strange physical characteristic was when they were really very scared the guys turned white. When you look back on these old films, the patterns come jumping out at you. The most consistent thing about them was the attack on the black man. He was never even given the privilege of being a man. He was a boy, 
as in, you know, here, boy. They had a lot of other great qualities besides being cowardly. For instance, they stole chickens. Who's in there? 